Damon returns home to the Vale and we see his lovely wife he's been talking about so fondly. His bronze bitch. They have a small conversation. It doesn't go well for her. She is gone. Damon smashes her head in with a rock. She is no more. And he is now free to marry again. Legally. Speaking of gone, Otto is now done. He's leaving King's Landing. On his exit, Alicent approaches him and they have a nice little conversation. Otto reinstills in Alicent that there is going to be war if Rhaenyra takes the throne. He promises to her if she does not push Aegon to be heir, there's going to be chaos. That is his departing message to her. They share a nice little moment, as nice as these two characters are ever going to have. And now Otto leaves the story. I don't know if Otto's going to come back. I really hope he does. I quite liked his character. You he was very interesting, but if he doesn't, he's left his mark, he's gone, he passes the baton onto Alicent, and she's going to take it and run from here. The royals travel to Driftmark to approach Corlys Valerian about a marriage pact. Rhaenyra and Laenor together moving forward. Upon arrival, Viserys is totally disrespected, he doesn't even get a welcome party, but he just accepts it and moves on. Viserys at this point just does not care about anything. He looks that sick, in pain, and over life. He's like, whatever. And I have to give credit to Paddy Considine, once again, for his betrayal of Viserys. To portray Viserys so worn down, beaten, hurt, in pain, exhausted, sick, at all times. And each episode he's looked worse and worse. To portray that is phenomenal. He is doing a terrific job. All the actors in the show are brilliant, but I feel like Paddy is getting overlooked. So Paddy Considine, you're the man. Rhaenyra and Laenor have a little agreement that they can dine how they want outside of marriage once they do their duty. And they both agree to this and it seems like a nice little arrangement going forward. Then we find out Laenor is actually gay. Um, he's got a boyfriend called Joffrey. I know that name sends shivers down my spine. Joffrey discovers who Rhaenyra's lover is, being Kristen Cole. He ba Joffrey basically notices that Kristen is super jealous and constantly like watching over Rhaenyra in a very domineering, obsessive way, which is all he needs to do. And then that's when he approaches Kristen with the knowledge that he knows his secret. Um, <laughs> Which is probably a really dumb idea to approach a king's guard and do that. It's kind of like blackmail. Well, anyway, it doesn't work out well for him. But that's my one criticism of the episode is there are many times where conversations that should be private aren't private. And if people heard these conversations, it'd be over for a lot of these big characters. And then we get to my boy, Sir Kristen. Oh. I feel bad. I feel so bad for Christian. He's just... He's just in love. <laughs> if you've ever been in love, you know what it's like when it's not reciprocated. Um, so I just feel bad for him. He, he, he's pouring his heart out to Rhaenyra and she just says, like, I can't help you. I can't run away with you. Which is fair enough. Absolutely she cannot. He's just suicidal. He's emotional. And it leads directly into what he does later in the episode. I shouldn't forget to mention he also confesses his guilt to Alicent about sleeping with Rhaenyra, exposing Rhaenyra for a liar, and exposing himself to the Queen. Alicent lets him go, but to me, this is going to make me think she's going to use Kristen in the future. Because, well now, he owes her his life. As we've seen in this episode, Alicent has really come out of her shell. She is ready, set to play the Game of Thrones. Her little walk into the wedding in green, the symbolism, everything behind that, everyone watching her. It's like a minute long sequence of her just walking. And it's very, very effective in letting you know Alicent has arrived. She's here to play the game. This wig is getting harder and harder to control. Every week, I might have to cut it to a Damon haircut. Anyway, let's touch on the wedding. I'll just go over a few small things. I don't really need to talk 
in depth about the wedding. But you get Damon returning. He just strolls in like, what? Matt Smith doesn't even have to talk and he commands so much of the screen. He's so cool. But he comes back without consequence. Viserys just says, whatever. Comes sit down at the high table. He flirts with Lena. Lainor's sister. She's very pretty. She's grown up quick, I bet. Viserys is looking at her going, damn. If I had just married her, life would be easier now. <laughs> Damon, you know, he confronts, pleads to Rhaenyra during a dance in High Valyria and they're speaking. And it's so cool when they speak in that language. It sounds so sexy and violent. It's just a cool language. She teases him back, almost like, just do it, do it. I'm not married yet, do it. Take me away, marry me. But of course that's not gonna happen. But they make you think it, and then they cut away, and then screaming erupts from the crowd. And you're like, ooh, ooh, what's happening, what's happening? Basically, Kristen has snapped. He beats Joffrey to death. Destroys him. The shot of his face caved in. <laughs> Horrible. But he gone. You know, Lena, he's very upset. Viserys starts to bleed from the nose during this. It's all coming to a big climax here, and then boom. But Viserys just sort of makes the call. He says, I'm not waiting to marry you. You're getting married now. They get married in the throne room while Joffrey's blood is still in a pool behind them, being eaten by a rat. Viserys collapses, his crown falls off his head, symbolism, and, and Kristen is saved from suicide by Alicent. And that's the episode. Episode five is done. I don't like how Kristen killed Joffrey and seemingly is not gonna face consequence. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's a small thing, but it takes me out of it when you have to ask questions like that, but I can let it go. Overall, a very good episode. I'm happy. It looks like next week we've got the time jump. I'm a bit disappointed there wasn't really a big climax to send these young actors away. It doesn't even really feel like they were given their goodbye, their due, you know? Like, I hope in the next episode we don't just go straight to them 10 years later. That's gonna be a bit weird. I th there needs to be that transition. But if not, it is what it is. I'm gonna leave you with that, people. Thank you for stopping by. And I'll leave you with one more thought. It's a horrible word, I know. Here in Australia, we use the C word a lot, but never, ever have I seen a movie or a series use the C word as brilliantly as Game of Thrones does. So, I'm gonna say thank you and bye bye now, but check out my little compilation of hilarious C words. Show me your cunt. The war for Cersei's cunt. <coughs> cunt. Ginger cunt. There's no cure for being a cunt. Lots of cunts. Listen to me, cunt. Any more words come pouring out your cunt mouth. Got you, you little cunt. 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 Bold cunt. Dumb cunt. You cunt. My father was a cunt. Cunt. Dumb cunt. Why are all the gods such vicious cunts? Cunt. Cunt. Those are your last words. Fuck you. Come on, you can do better. Cunt. Bring in loyal hands. A cunt. Ha, ha, ha.